Hi, uh, my name is Mark Wolf, and I'm the curator of digital collections at the University of Albany. I'm presenting with my colleague, Greg Wiedemann, who is a university archivist here at the University of Albany. We will both be presenting the Mailbag Project, Building Digital Preservation Tools Around File Systems. This presentation comes out of our work on a grant project. The grant project is titled Mailbag, a Stable Package for Email in Multiple Formats. This project is funded by the University of Illinois Email Archives Building Capacity and Community Project. I wanted to talk about the project origins. <clears throat> A few years back, we wanted to document state politics, specifically document elections here in New York State. In 2016, we did a project where we collected fundraising emails from federal level inc incumbent candidates. We uh, went to the candidates' websites. We signed up for email uh, to receive, you know, to receive um, political information and so forth. We had a student create a Gmail account to sign up for email blasts and uh, of all sorts of email relating to their campaigns. At the end of the election season, we download, downloaded the inbox file export and added it to our repository workflow. So we had the inbox and our question at the time and still is now what or was um, inboxes uh, as a email format are great they're well structured. Um, basically we tried processing all of the politicians email from that um, 2016 and later on in 2019. We used Python scripts to extract um, email. Um, in particular, we were trying, we were realizing there was a lot of HTML in these uh, email messages. So we used Python scripts to extract that as well. Uh, we converted to PDF and we used um, what is called WK HTML to PDF, which is an open source Python tool to re render HTML into PDF. So what we learned is that pathways to email processing and preservation, if you will, actually do exist, uh, but email accounts that were processed lack crucial information in the email. So we, we did do a lot of work, but the, the output that we got, we weren't happy with. The pathways are challenging for archivists. They weren't not only challenging for us, but we can imagine challenging for most archivists in the profession, both in terms of workflow um, and the tools to preserve email. Um, much of this work that we did all required customized computer code that we created in Python mostly. Um, at the end of the day, what we had uh, was we had email exports that didn't contain images, they were missing. Um, There's CSS that was required to re render a lot of the email, and there was links to web content that got either broken or, or lost in the basically in the process. Uh, complications with email marketing software, which is so popular now. Um, in fact, most email um, from politicians we found were being launched from tools like MailChimp, where you're actually in a web application and sending email rather than, say, sending a, a blast from like an Outlook account or a Gmail account. So we found that um, basically email export files were degrading over time. Um, it did not include externally hosted content. So that would be like I say, a MailChimp platform. Uh, images, CSS, uh, poten potentially interactive um, within the email was or will be lost. Um, and sometimes we are finding significant data loss just within a matter of months, again, because a lot of this content is hosted on the web. And as we know, the web is just constantly changing and being updated or deleted or lost and so forth. Um, and then with that, links were to web content were either broken or, or lost altogether. Um, and a lot of the uh, email marketing software and campaign software uh, uses its own um, way of basically counting clicks and, and so forth. So sometimes the URLs are not really clearly addressable or human readable. So some notes about email preservation. Um, email preservation is currently a challenging endeavor. Uh, there's no single preservation format for email that exists currently. Uh, for example, um, 
with other challenges that the archival profession has had, um, we have image and audio formats. For example, we have a preservation format like TIFF and RAW for images. For audio, we have .wave. Uh, both audio and image preservation formats are widely used in the archival profession as well as in the private sector. But for email, there is no single preservation format. Uh, we have inbox and EML. Um, they preserve structure very well, but they don't really do well with content. Uh, PST is a proprietary Outlook, uh, Outlook format owned by Microsoft. And PDFs, while they're great for access and conform and do really well with document look and feel and easy to print out, they do not preserve uh, structure. Basically, at the end of the day with a PDF, you're merely left with an image or maybe if you're lucky, an image over uh, unstructured text. <clears throat> Excuse me, not all emails are static documents. Increasingly, as I've said before, emails composed of HTML content linked to the web. Emails have dynamic contact like uh, co uh, content like hover overs, uh, animations, and other typical HTML based uh, interactivity. For example, email marketing platforms like MailChimp increasingly rely on dy dynamic web content. And not many uh, open source processing tools are usable for our archivists at this point. So the mailbag approach uh, using multiple formats. The approach in our project is to allow for multiple preservation formats. For example, uh, a mailbag could contain many combination or number of formats such as PDF, which is, provides a nice ease of access, a work file to preserve web content and interactivity, and inbox and EML formats to preserve structure. Um, any number or combination of those formats can be used um, using a mailbag. We have many in incarnations listed in what a mailbag may hold, which reflects the rich diversity of content held in creators' uh, email accounts. So uh, mailbag deliverables, uh, the grant project builds on Bagot, a specification developed by the Library of Congress. The Bagot specification, which is a, I'll quote here, a hierarchical, hierarchical file packaging format for storage and transfer of digital content. This will be the underlying specification on which mailbag relies. With ba the Bagot specification, a bag has the enough structure to enclose descriptive tags and a payload and, but does not require knowledge of the payloads, payloads internal semantics, which is perfect for our uh, purposes of creating the mailbag specification. The Bagot spec is specification is widely used. It validates fixity and it uses the computer file system for structure. The mailbag tool is, will, is being written in Python as we speak. Uh, the project will create a mailbagot tool that can be used via the command line interface or graphical user interface. A basic GUI will, will allow archivists who lack command line tools to use the tool. And also um, goes without saying, a command line utility will be available to run the mail uh, bagot tool with perhaps advanced fr uh, functions when using the command line. The mail bagot tool will package up all formats of email into mail bag and it'll enable capture. So I want to talk about the specification development process. Um, in, bu in building an open specification, we wanted it to be independent of the mailbag tool. Uh, we wanted the specification to be community driven. And so we reached out to community experts for input and advice. We sought feedback for a variety of use cases. We developed personas to aid in this process. And we created a suggest a user Google form to, to help in gathering the feedback to make it as easy as possible for community members and others to uh, submit their feedback. Our user stories range from various types of archivist rules, roles to historians and genealogists, as well as other uh, roles. We created as well a suggest a or prioritize a requirement form to gather needs for the specification, as well as the tool's design and functionality. We wanted to um, basically allow for additional implementations, support broader use cases than we can resource, and promote interoperability. The project created an advisory board to consult on the project specification development and scoping, 
gathering community feedback and advice on the software development process. We wrote into the grant to offer honoraria for the mailbag specification working meeting. This working meeting was um, envisioned to be a two hour mailbag specification working meeting that would be ho hosted over Zoom. The project team with feedback from the advisory board and the consultant developer wrote the first draft of the mailbag specification. Greg and I hired two graduate student software de developers from UAlbany to begin coding uh, the tool in Python. We also instituted a collaborative development process that also includes the more experienced consultant developer in this process. At this point, I'd like to hand the presentation over to Greg McCauley. Hi, so I'm gonna talk about what we came up with for the mailbag specification. So this is what it, uh, an example of what it might look like. It'll look very familiar um, to anyone who's, who knows Bagot. Um, it's a mailbag, it's just a Bagot bag with some extra requirements. In the payload or data directory, there's um, specified subfolders that you'd use for whatever formats you're using. So if you have um, email represented in MBOX or PST or PDF or WARC, in your mailbag, that's what the subfolders uh, named. There's also an attachment subdirectories where all the attachments for the emails can be also stored optionally. The only other requirement is a mailbag CSV tag file that I'll talk a little bit more about in a bit. So diving in a little bit more on what that payload directory looks like, um, within these format directories, you can also have additional subdirectories that can represent the folder structure of the um, email account. So if you have inbox or email folders that gets preserved as well. And if you notice, it is semantic, so it is designed to be human readable. So it is both structured that we can um, use it, computers can use it, and humans can uh, navigate a mailbag just as an extension of um, Bagot. So the mailbag CSV file is, is needed to connect those different representations um, of email uh, together within each other. And we use that via an identifier system. Now, um, emails have what a uh, message ID, um, as a unique identifier, but that's not a not always included in the email export formats, and it also often includes special characters that don't get written well to the file system um, for file names and things. So we actually, unfortunately, had to require a, a, in the specification a, a separate identifier system. So we're having also an, a mailbag message ID field as well as message ID, um, and that could just be any any unique number unique to a mailbag that can be written to uh, a file name. So it can just be a sequential number of one, two, three, four. So the CSV sort of contains both of those identifiers, so acts as a lookup. And also message pass, you can find where it is within the higher uh, the, the um, mailbox directory structure where you can go find it within the payload directory. The original file name, to which, so you can tell where it actually, the original source of the email was, um, and a integer number of attachments. And optionally, you can also put a lot of the common header information um, from emails in this mailbag CSV that may or may not be useful depending on your use case. So um, we really, uh, as Mark sort of overviewed, we really th um, thought that we wanted uh, this specification to be community driven. So we had a really, hopefully we had a really robust community feedback process. We both sent out a, a community call and then we did our, our, our working meeting to get some people with like hands-on expertise to really pull apart um, the format. But there's two, um, two instances and two questions in particular kept coming up that we couldn't really get consensus on. And that was one, should, can or should a mailbag contain multiple email accounts? And can an email be used, a, ma a mailbag be used to package multiple versions of email, such as for weeding and redactions, which is really common in email um, workflows. So we wrote these up as GitHub issues on the mailbag GitHub account. So um, that has more detail and also has some community comments too. So we can sort of figure out where these endpoints were. Um, and we thought we were really hesitant when we thought about these because we thought um, what we really liked about this project is that it had its own niche. Um, it was really simple. It solved that one problem. I have an inbox file, now what do I do with it? So to get that inbox file into some sort of stable package that, or, um, that won't degrade over time and, and be that um, uh, well enough preservation format that we can preserve it over time and also enable some, some near to capture processing where we can make some PDF files and some sort of workflow to get access to the email. So we, we like that sort of niche of the mailbag and these we felt were sort of going beyond that. But we, again, we really valued the community feedback. So we didn't really 
we envision going through this process to adapt our goals and the project to the community. So um, we thought a lot more about this and like, why wasn't this meeting our expectations? And so what I sort of came up with is that I think these are not necessarily the questions that our, our users were, uh, potential users were asking. I think when we're talking about can should an e uh, mailbag contain multiple email accounts, we're really talking about maintaining data structure and relationships. And we're talking about versioning. Both of these things are not email specific. They're common throughout digital preservation, right? And moreover, these are really challenging problems for us to address. And also we don't really have tools to combat these problems. Um, so we thought this was really beyond what we can do, not only with our, our um, with the mailbag project, but also like stimulated some really interesting conversations about what we're doing and asking of our tools. So we keep asking our applications to do um, so much of these, um, these workflow tools. And it's really a duplication of effort because each tool has to perform these similar functions in different contexts. Um, and they'll be less effective as set secondary requirements. So that's not what primarily the tool was built to do. But it's also hard to build workflow specific tools, like sp tools specifically for versioning or maintaining data structures, because those structures differ across various tools and domains. You're going to find the data that you're working with with um, digital video and emails to be really different and the tools around them to be different. So it's hard to build like versioning structures that work with both of them. But if we look at our like needs that we have to, um, for digital preservation, we have so many different complex workflows and each of these new data type adds a bunch of different complexity and there's so many uh, edge cases. Um, I really like this uh, essay um, talk about uh, by Elizabeth England that talks about some of these edge, case, edge cases. Um, we're just, the digital preservation just has to be bespoke. We have to do these really manual edge cases um, at, from time to time. And I can't really imagine supporting web applications for all of these needs. Why are we trying to keep doing things in this way? So we talked about this a lot, and I think this is more of a labor structure problem. Our organizations really have this division of labor, right? From information, techno information prof professionals that are might be your, your archivists or librarians and technologists, which might be your web developer or um, sysadmin. And they're sort of divided into these two categories with two different traditional skill sets. And web apps and other large monolithic tools like really fit this model really well, right? The developers can create and maintain these applications and the archivists and librarians can use the interfaces they build to, to fulfill the missions. Um, but these custom interfaces are inherently limited. We can't really do for all the bespoke digital preservation needs. We're not really gonna get a drop down that's gonna like fulfill all of our workflow needs for digital preservation. And also digital preservation labor ends up crossing these organizational boundaries um, as well. And our practitioner skills, our practitioners skill sets also cross these boundaries. So uh, um, our practitioners really working in digital preservation need um, skill sets traditionally ass assigned with archivists and librarians, right? Curation skills, appraisal skills, and also skills um, traditionally the, in the domain of the technologists, basic coding skills, and even other skills that don't necessarily having to do with coding, but understanding of file formats and how file systems work and uh, text encoding and all those things. And because these practitioners sort of straddle these boundaries, our organizations aren't really structured well to support this. Um, there's a really great article, What's Wrong with Digital uh, Stewardship, that, um, I'll send, uh, that there's links to in the slides that I think really highlights this. Um, and because we don't really support these positions, access to these roles is not equitable. Um, I don't have any like perfect magical solutions to this, but I think in thinking about how this affects the mailbag project, I think we do have some sort of steps forward at least. And one of them is sort of using the file system as an interface. Um, file systems are great. They're really ubiquitous in everyday computing life. They're really well-maintained support. We don't have to support a file system interface as from our library. Um, they're also super flexible. You can do a lot within uh, a directory and file structure. Um, they're familiar with technologists to support. Um, most places are able to support network shares um, or cloud storage that's viewed through a network share. Um, and they're familiar for, mo most importantly, familiar to users of a variety of backgrounds and skill sets. So both your technologists can use a file system 
and your traditional archivist and um, librarian can also use a file system. And they both provide both manual access for those bespoke digital preservation activities and also computational access at scale. We can use scripts, we can use um, powerful software can also act upon a uh, file system, but we also can like navigate that directory tree and find that file. Um, so to, to do this, to use the file system as this interface, we have to rely on these semantic specifications. So this is sort of what we we're thinking about in the, the baggage specification or the mailbag specification. These are abstract documents that define what a tool does and how that data is structured in a sort of common way. And really, these are great, um, important communication tools that sort of we can sort of come together and collaborate to define what our data looks like. And they're really cool because they also allow participation across these sort of organizational boundaries. Both technologists can contribute to these and also um, people with more traditional archivist and librarian skill sets. Um, and they provide a common data structure that will promote interoperability between tools. If tools can outport to, um, to this, these specifications to the file system, another tool can read the specification and be interoperable with it. And it also can be interoperable with bespoke preservation activities. So in this sort of model, the file system acts sort of like an API. And we can build sort of um, really complex tool, digital preservation tools around file systems, right? We can um, manage checksums and track fixity over time. We can validate file formats. We can um, do a lot of things, uh, digital preservation activities at scale um, at files in a file system. But we can also um, write a one-off script that to solve a single problem. Um, uh, and we could also just navigate that directory tree to find things so we can actually, nothing would get lost. And we can actually perform those bespoke long tail preservation activities that we have to now like really dive in and, and focus on those really those those edge cases. And the cool thing about this is that it allows our tools to have limited scope. They don't have to try to do everything. They can just output to the file system in a structured way, and another tool can sort of pick up from there. In this model, we sort of sustain systems of tools around these file systems. Many small system tools fit our problems in digital pres preservation much better than large monolithic systems. We've known this for some time, but we don't really, we haven't been able to build these systems to be interoperable with each other. So I think it's really helpful if we think to rely on the file system as that interface between both tools and tools and humans. And this semantic specifications are key to this interoperability so that both humans and um, complex tools can utilize them in, in a structured way. And that both of these things are cool because they bridge these organizational boundaries that like are really complicated to work around. And it will enable both these, the human-centered bespoke work to do that digital, these long tail digital present activities and also computational work that we need to do at scale. And this is sort of the, the world that Mailbag is sort of envisioning. So um, I put a bunch of links that might be useful. These are our, the Mailbag Project website where you can look at all of our design documents, our requirements, our um, our personas our, and user stories. Um, we're currently on working on collaborative development for the Mailbag project in this fall and next spring. So you can track that on our GitHub. Um, and then these are two links for some citations that we had in the project. So, and the, this is um, our contact information. If you have questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you very much for uh, attending our, our session.